What is up everyone? This is just one more Gaijin and I'm going to be talking about five things I wish I knew before coming to Japan. Now it's a lovely day outside, kind of. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy but hopefully the sun will burn that out. And make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video because uh, hopefully I'll be drinking a very cute cappuccino with my very cute girlfriend. Uh, I'll see you then. Number one! You don't have to be nice or polite. Hey, that's my swing. Get off. Now, don't be a jackass, but you can be impolite uh, if, if, if you need to be. And you can be impolite in polite ways too. When I was in university and I was studying Japanese and Japanese culture, I probably misunderstood that you have to be polite all the time, no matter what. It's not true. One example is uh, my friend, he went to a shrine and uh, he was trying to get a shuin. A uh, shuin or kind of like uh, an autograph of the temple or shrine. Uh, that's very, very simply put. But he was five minutes late, just five minutes late. And he really liked this place. Um, and the, the worker, wouldn't let him uh, get the shoeing. And I told him, you know, go back there, dude. Say uh, how you really feel. Like, tell her that, you know, you really like this shrine and it would just, you know, mean the world to you if you could call that person back uh, from his break or her break and uh, have him do the autograph. And he went back there and, and she did. Now, that's an example of being kind of impolite in a polite way. An example of being impolite, just straight up, is uh, me, actually, unfortunately. I went to a karaoke place and I was talking to the worker and we decided on the price uh, and the time. After I said my time, he said, oh, and also you have to pay this amount of money uh, in drinks. I asked him, do I have to buy those drinks? And he said, yeah, you do. So, I was like, so the price isn't really this, it's this plus these drinks. And he was like, yeah, I didn't like that. I thought that was pretty shady of him. Uh, maybe not of him, of maybe the company. So I told him, you know, tell me before uh, we decide on the price. And then he was like, oh, so you don't want to do karaoke? What? That was a bit rude to me. So I was like, no, I want to do the karaoke. We'll, we'll buy the drinks. So I went in there. We had fun, did our singing, and came out without the drinks. I went down to pay. He's like, oh, you didn't, you didn't buy your drink. What do you want us to do? Do you want us to go back to the, the karaoke box? And he said, uh, okay, maybe just for this time, you don't have to do it, but next time, please do. There wasn't a next time. Not cool. So what I'm saying is, you know, you, you don't have to take everything that's given to you in Japan. You don't have to say, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I, yep, I'll do that. Oh, I'll pay this extra money. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Yep. You don't have to do that. You can, you know, haggle, for lack of a better word. You can, you know, voice your opinion. Don't be a jackass. You know, know what you want to say and, and let them know. That's it. Part two. Japanese people are nice, very nice, extremely nice, the nicest people you'll ever meet. But sometimes that's bad. As an American, it can be difficult to understand if Japanese people are being friendly because they want to be friends with you or if they're being friendly because it's the culture. So you just have to be careful, you know, use your head, think about, you know, does this person really want to be friends with me or are they just being polite? And honestly, if I'm complaining about people being too nice, that's probably a good thing. Ah, number three, food. And more importantly, the importance of food. In Japan, food is an extremely important part of uh, everyday life. Obviously, it's a, important in almost everyone's daily life. They've taken it to just a completely different level. It, they put so much time and effort into it. 
to make it as perfect as I can. But coming here uh, has made me realize just the importance of food and uh, presentation and the way you make it and the ingredients you use. Every city has their own uh, famous food. Every prefecture is known for something, like uh, Okayama is known for its peaches and its grapes. Uh, we also have kibidango. I'm pretty lucky, I can eat almost anything. So Japan is like heaven for me. Number four. Culture shock. Well, really, any kind of shock. No matter what kind of experience you have or what you've done or where you've been, you're gonna have this. I had studied Japanese for four years, Japanese culture, history, the language. I, I had studied abroad. I thought I was ready for everything. Culture shock? No, that wouldn't happen to me. But it did and it will happen to you. It's not the big things that really get to you, like the language or the writing or having to deal uh, with a bunch of paperwork that means nothing. It's the small things. Just little differences that, that really build up. The big one for me is uh, Christmas, or really from October to December, even January. You just have all these things that you really, really miss. You know, you, you look at your friends and at, on Facebook, and uh, you just, sometimes you just want to go home. And there are other things like um, society shock. I came to Japan the day after I graduated. It was my first big job. I wasn't ready for, the, for working. Of course, I'd had many side jobs and other things like that, but I just wasn't ready. On top of being in a different culture, using a different language, living in a small apartment, it's gonna happen. So be ready for it and uh, work through it. You can do it. I did it. And lastly, that brings us to number five, racism. This is a bit of a serious one. So I uh, figured we sit down and talk about it a little bit. S small things that can build up over time. I'm sure we've all heard, oh, you use chopsticks very well. Or you say, konnichiwa, and they're like, your Japanese is perfect. Or just basically constantly getting questions of, you know, where are you from? Why did you come to Japan? It doesn't mean to be harmful. Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Japanese people are just trying to uh, start conversation or, you know, to, to connect. Getting that every time you meet a new person can really just get grating. It can really grate down on you. So. Is this racism or, or what is it? You know, uh, it's not for me to say. What I do want to say is that after you've been here for a while, it can get really old. If you're the person, the type of person for this to get on your nerves and wear you down and let it get to you, it's going to be really difficult for you to live here. You just have to go with the flow and, uh, and, and not take it too seriously. Just realize that they're not, it's, it doesn't mean anything bad. They're not trying to say, you know, get out of my country. But for the most part, it's just small kind of stuff that is really harmless. All right, guys, that was five things that I wish I knew before coming to Japan. And remember, all of this was my opinion. So if you don't agree, that's completely fine. That's great, actually. If you don't agree, let me know. If you have questions, let me know. If you want to add more, let me know. Just let me know in the comments down below. And uh, remember, if you like the video, you know what to do. And here is the very cute cappuccino that I promised. Looks like today we have a rabbit. Arisa, what do you think of the, the cappuccino? <laughs> Cue the outro. Five things that I wish I knew before I came to Japan. I'm not looking at the camera, Aisa. I gotta look at the camera, not at the screen. Come on. That was uh, five things I wish I knew before I came. Oh, five. That was, that was a late five. Let's do it one more time. Five things that I wish I knew before I came to Japan. Four. All right, here we go. All right, guys. That's five things that I wish I knew before coming to Japan. Remember, this is all my opinion, so it's, it's not ironclad, um, but there are things that I wish that I knew before I came to Japan, hence the name.
things I wish I knew before coming to Japan. Mm. Great job, Daniel. That's really good.